Hi everybody, Red Thunder, Head of the Cave here. I'd like to take this moment to thank our newest sponsor, The Bear Box. Now, I know you're used to hearing plugs where people waffle on about how great a product is, but here's the thing, I subscribed to this before they sponsored us, and I always thought it was the best box, so to get sponsored by these guys is actually a bit of a dream come true for us. Now, in the coming weeks we'll have details for how exactly you can go about Signing up to these guys through us, so that we get a percentage back, it doesn't cost you anything. But in the meantime, we'll be unboxing these bad boys and showing you exactly what is inside the bear box that makes us so proud to call them our newest sponsor. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever time of day you've taken to join us. Thank you so much and welcome to the new and improved from the Back Cave. As you can see, things are a lot more clear now. In fact, we've stepped over the realm from standard definition into HD. I'm your host, Red Thunder Adam Gerard, coming at you in all my HD glory. And joining me are my HD compadres, the Dad Knight, Braden Ahern. HD and beautiful. <laughs> The Probe, Matt Richens. HD, no beard. HD, SD, 4K, same mm. story. LL Cool Elder himself, Wayne Campbell. Yay. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. And wow. yes, I am black. Yeah, that's not a problem with the contract. What? <laughs> yeah. You can see it in HD, wait, finally. Wait, you're not Mexican? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and of course, the president herself, Adriana Alden. Still, we have ADHD. Yep, in HD. In HD. So, how are we all? <laughs> how are we all since we've been on a bit of a break, a bit of hiatus? Have we been up to much? Yeah, I've well, been um, busy working my my business, trying to get that going on the road. So yeah. that's going on. How's how's well. how, how's uh, being a professional cheer pet hooker working out for you? <laughs> uh, fuck you. It's going to be one of those nights, is it? It's been four months. I got a lot of pent up aggression I need to get out. It's like Festivus. I got a lot of it's issues, and you're all going to hear about it. For. I don't masturbate thinking about how much I hate you. No, but it I gets masturbate rid of... thinking about you getting run over by a steamroller. But masturbation helps relieve excess tension. So yeah, anybody up to anything special? I, uh, I myself, uh, I do, I do have some things coming. Unfortunately, uh, at the moment, I can't talk about it because. Um, Look, it's it's. Uh, I'll just say I went on a bit of a pilgrimage into the into the uh, the high hills of Tibet, and I, I learned some things. And in uh, in the coming few weeks and months, you'll see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else do anything interesting? You, did you go to Tibet? Uh, yeah. What'd you do, Braden? Did you go to Tibet? I'm uh, up. No, 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 Tibet. Probably hell. I went to hell. Oh, you uh, play Pokemon um, Go. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I didn't do a little bit of that. Yep, yep. Forgot that that was a release. You're a dickhead. <laughs> what a wanker. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking loser for life. Oh, a whole heap. Uh, been, been through hell and back. So that's uh, about all I'm going to say on that. And, uh, yeah, Pokemon Go was released. So that's been good fun. Getting out and about. Don't cry, Matt. I'm not crying. Have you got an issue with people crying? No, I don't have an issue with people crying. No? No. You know, I, I, I want to call you to task on something. Yeah. Because uh, we, you've had four months off, and four months ago you said you were going to work on a project, and I don't think you have. Oh, yeah. Uh, you haven't done it. Have that. you done it? I have done half of it. Have you, though? Yes. Have you, though? Yeah. Or is this like that time that you said you half lost your virginity, and by that you meant you, you found a hamster, you named it virginity, and you lost it, but your mum found it later on? Are you, are you working on it right now? No, just don't, just don't know. All right, well, I guess while he's working on that, uh, guys, uh, do we want to get into what this show is really about, why we all came back from hiatus for this special episode? Do we want to get into it? Yeah, yes. 
What are we getting into? Yeah. Oh, we're getting into, into the, the swamps. Out. Yeah, into the out and into the swamps. So here we go. And now for our feature presentation. Government agents, scientists, master criminals, secret formulas, monsters, and midgets. None of them belong in this swamp. Only one thing does. The Swamp Thing. The comic book legend lives. Adrian Barbo and the Swamp Thing. An outrageous pair. The Swamp Thing. Rated PG. Swamp Thing, 1982, directed by horror masterpiece legend Wes Craven. The story starts with government agent Alice Cable arriving in the swamps of Louisiana in search of Dr. Alec Holland. Holland is a biomolecular researcher who has made breakthroughs in plant matter and plant genetic research that allow plants to grow seemingly anywhere overnight to lush, rich quantities. However, Dr. Ar Anton Arcane hunts Holland uh, wanting his formulas. After all, these formulas can bring about, well, peace. They can also create very bizarre genetic monsters. Ultimately, what Arcane is searching is for the Fountain of Youth, which he believes Alec Holland holds the key to. However, Holland's lab is broken into, a massive firefight breaks out, Holland is set on fire after being doused in his own chemicals and disappears in the swamp, thinking and seemingly to be dead. Arcane gives up his search, believing that he will never find Holland's missing books. However, the third and final missing piece has been saved by Alice Cable. Holland is not dead. He becomes Swamp Thing, a uh, physical manifestation of the swamp who is now plant matter and draws uh, his powers from all around him in the swamps. He's basically unkillable and he's pretty damn cool. However, in this one, the rubber suit, eh, it's a little bit dodgy. Gets better in the next one, don't worry. Here's a sneak preview. Yeah, we've got that coming. We look forward to that. Anyway, this is what we're looking at at the moment. Look at the head on that, will you? Anyway. The story of this film basically becomes that Swamp Thing and Arcane are fighting each other out because uh, Arcane wants the book and Cable tries to keep it from him, so she kidnaps Cable and yada yada yada. Anyway, there's two versions of this film. It's very important we talk about this right now. The US version was cut, PG-13, and it contained two less minutes of footage. The two minutes of footage that went out to the international market were mainly boobs like this. Sorry, we can't show you the nipples, but uh, it's YouTube and we don't want to get pulled down for inappropriate conduct. But if you just Google Swamp Thing boobies, they'll come right up. Uh, anyway, back to the point of this film. So, after she gets nude and they have a, they have a loving moment and Swamp Thing's like, I'm kind of a man, but I'm also in the swamp. Uh, he, a Anton Arcane is like, well, I'm going to inject myself with some of this serum, because fuck it. And instead of uh, turning him into uh, the Fountain of Youth, it turns him into a monster and then there's a big punchy, fighty, monster, rubber suit thing. It looks kind of Godzilla-like, and I don't know if Wes Craven was trying to pay homage to those old-school days of monster films, or if simply the $2.5 million budget went exclusively into that wetsuit. If it did go into that wetsuit, bugger me, mate, get your money back. Anyway, let's move on. The fight happens. Anton Arcane is killed and swamp things all like, you need to get out of here, and uh, sends Cable back to, this, back to civilization, even though... He loves her, and he vows that he'll stay in the swamp to protect her forever. Oh, we didn't mention also, it was very great to see the first appearance of LL Cool J in a film. There he is. Thanks very much for that, LL. Good to see you getting your big break on the silver screen. Yeah, so Swamp Thing. Uh, I'm not going to lie. The reason we watch this, everybody, for you at home is because I was like, hey, guys, let's get back into this <laughs> with something fun. Something from the childhood that I loved. Turns out... I really like the sequel. This first one is harsh, man. Woo! Wes Craven. <laughs> we, you give me shit about dropping out of film school. I think Wes Craven dropped out of film school for this one. Bugger me. Uh, the one thing I will say, though, before, before, we get to shit, <laughs> before we get into anything else, uh, Dr. Arcane from this. Uh, I, I've taken on upon myself to, uh, to go back and watch all the Bond films from start to finish. And I just finished Dr. Pussy. <laughs> last night and this dude is in it and the whole time i'm just like i can't take you seriously as a bond villain you're dr arcane but one thing i did realize about this man's style and that is that you must 
to, to be him, you must breathe in for everything you say and then finish it with a uh sound. A swamp thing. I, I see you continue to live. Uh, it would be most unfortunate if uh, Alec Holland continued to live in the swamp part. Yeah. Swamp thing. I will kill you. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And he, oh. he, he's got a real pedo hair, braiding hair award. 1982. That was kind of the, just 1982 hair. They, <laughs> they didn't really have hair gel for another couple of years. Until <laughs> like, the really. punk scene really kicked yeah. in. Yeah. Deserve that, Bit of rapey hair, yeah. If anything, I'm giving rapey hair to, to Rambo headband. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. He, he's, he's got, uh, I'm going to go with uh, European rapey hair <laughs> on that one. International rapist. International rapist, yeah. <laughs> and there were so many shots with um, Cable where she'd be in the water and then she'd come out in her hair and it's like a perfect dry throw. The perm. Again. Oh, yeah. the perm. Some people would be jealous of that perm. Yeah. Some people wouldn't be. How's yeah. your, uh, are you still, like, has it? Yeah, it's just buffering. What? Why not? Oh, after effects open, I don't. Anyway. Dude, just. Okay. Anyway, so back to Swamp Thing. Um, yeah, as I say, Swamp Thing, actually, one of my favorite. It's, even watching this back, it's bad, and maybe it's the nostalgia for me, but I didn't totally hate it. It's cheesy, and it's a monster movie, and this uh, maybe it's because I know what comes in the second one. Uh, but, yeah, well, the only problem... I have with this film is it's a little bit slow and that suit is horrible. Oh, and the yeah, lack of boobies. It's about well, see, I've I've seen the uh, I've seen the international cut enough times. We watched the the PG thirteen, keeping it real for the kids cut where they cut out the boobies. Whereas I, I've seen the international cut enough. I know I know what them boobies look like. Disappointing, dude. What's that? Um, what's that shortcut for final cut when you like splice some things? What's that? B. B. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> But we got to remember, it was the 80s, you know. Um, early 80s. It was early 80s. Yeah. So late 70s, 80s, you know, the technology was still shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you oh. know, and, but what really disappointed me was, you know, they were in the swamps. And, you know, Braden might attest to this as well. Because he lives in Mo in the swamps. He lives... <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, his shed was in the swamps. So, Braden... It was a swampy thing about four months ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. But what really pissed me off was, you know, it wasn't swamps, but there was no... Um, banjo. Uh, yeah, banjo, you know, do, 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 do. Oh, no, no, uh, no proper backwater. Yeah. yeah it's probably been the south too, see, you think. But with that said, with but that no, said... Hillbillies yeah, yeah, because you got to balance it out. You can't have hillbillies and black people. They don't coexist. True. One will always wipe out the other, and I'll give you a hint, normally the white one survives, sadly, but... You know, there's a little black kid with yeah, me as a black family. One black kid though. One. Where's the rest of the family? He's just running that store. <laughs> what is up with that? He's like 12 and there's like, man, the store? <laughs> Where my parents gone? Oh, the fucking hillbillies took him. Um, he loves coke too. <laughs> to me, to me, we brought up, we brought up, we, we were joking and saying that this was Wayne um, in it. And this kid drinks so much coke, I wouldn't be surprised if he was diabetic like LL is in real life. Yeah. <laughs> so much Coca-Cola this kid pumped, man. It's like they paid him in coke. <laughs> and not like the fucking Richard Pryor where you pay him in coke. <laughs> um, it was the PG-13. Like, there, there was a scene where uh, Kimber was running away from a, a 4x4 that was chasing her. And like, there was multiple shots of like going to her and looking at her and running and then looking back at them driving and it was just like they just went cut pace because like they took this corner like five times yeah, <laughs> yeah there's a there's a quality stuff in this and, and i love the ability of everyone to be able to find absolutely everyone in a swamp they're like there's 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 He's over here. Did you not notice Arcade's Manor outlet literally rolls straight into the swamp that they just drive their fucking um, airboats along? <laughs> my favourite part was Swamp Thing's hiding amongst these reeds. Well, not my favourite, one of my favourite parts. Swamp Thing's hiding amongst these reeds, right? And so this is the boat, and he's just like, the, okay, this is the boat, right? And he's just literally like, Yeah, and the the guy from the boats are like, where is he? <laughs> and it wasn't literally like, like I was teabagging him, and he's just like fucking, I'm the swamp. 
John Cena, mate. It wasn't the re the, 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 movie. Movie. <laughs> the movie, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, all right. Let's let's hand over to Mo. I want to hear what Mo has to say about Swamp Thing. How how, how do they take Swamp Thing and Mo? Yeah, look, I um, I've never seen this before. Prior to this, haven't seen the sequel or anything like that. Not real familiar at all with the character so i was pretty interested to see um this story and then i was i was it dragged on a bit to begin with uh they sort of went with the the opening credits saying um you know doctor was in an accident became the swamp thing blah blah blah, blah. so the way they sort of said that i thought that that had already happened so i'm watching this whole opening sequence waiting for this dude to come out of the swamp and it didn't happen um, and then you see the accent, you're like, oh, okay, I get it now. <laughs> the, the fact that I got confused as well as to where this swamp is located, because they came in on a helicopter to begin with, so it made me feel like this swamp was in the middle of butt fuck nowhere. <laughs> Next minute, they a the gas station. You still gotta have gas in the swamp. Do, do they not have gas in Mo? I thought it was a fucking swamp. In the, no, they're running on kerosene. <laughs> they don't run on kerosene. They're still running on the like in the war where you would get your Steam. fat and take your dead horse and turn it into fat for petrol. Like you know, make petrol that way. That's how they make the petrol in Mo. Just cast all the dead fire, bodies yeah. in there. When I when I first saw the suit, I was um, I was like, oh, this fucking something a lot bigger. Yeah. I mean, I don't really know what Swamp Thing is supposed to look like or anything like that, but I expected him to be a lot more dirty and a lot bigger. And the way they were talking about um, bonding with plants and stuff, I expected to see, like, vines and weeds and shit hanging off him. And, um, yeah, it was pretty bad. So I liked I liked the way it looked around his eyes, and that was very... There's there's two different ways Swamp Thing's drawn in the comics. He's drawn the way... But that, that one is close to the original comics where he just looks like kind of a... A pile of slime almost like he's meant to almost look like just slime that's come to life um they didn't really capture it in this one it looks close to what it looks like on the panel on the comic panel but without the glisten it doesn't feel like slime whereas the second one which is the one we see in the return which is the, the more um iconic and the one you'll probably see more in say the upcoming dc universe animated films and i'm hoping into the the movie universe as well as the mossy one where he's kind of branches and moss and Almost um, like a mossy version of Groot. He's hmm. very similar to, to what he becomes. Oh, um, yeah. Swamp. He's pretty cool. <laughs> the, the sequel, the sequel is, a, is a different tone to this film. Um, and as we'll see when we get there on the next episode, it's a much better, it's hmm. a much better film in my opinion. Um, but yeah, the, the, I think where this swamp is meant to be is kind of... Where his research area is is right back in the the deep waters of the swamps, but where this um, where this uh, gas station's meant to be is just off to the edge of town. So I think yeah. more of what you've got is like the gas station is on the edge of town. So she's run all the way through this ridiculous swamp to get there, to get out of the way of these fucking mercenaries because they're way back in the swamp. That's my yeah. theory, yeah. but. And uh, the, the whole movie seems after the point where he became the Swamp Thing, the movie pretty much just went around in circles about 10 times before finishing. Yeah. Um, it was, chase the girl, Swamp Thing saves her. Chase the girl, Swamp Thing saves her. Chase the girl, Swamp Thing saves her. Again and again and again. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And oh, then you had sort and... of your ending. That was the movie. And the, the close-up on inan- uh, inanimate objects... Before something happens to be like, this is really, really fucking important. Better pay attention to this one thing because you might need to know what that thing is in five minutes' time. I bet she puts the book in the safe. Yep. She puts it in and then she taps it three times. Yep. <laughs> I also like uh, where I came, where I came, uh, give us the guy, uh, he has, have a drink, Bruno. And then you're, you're like, well, something's going to happen to Bruno because he falls out of shot for like four seconds. You're like, yep, something's coming. And um, yeah. I think the best part was that not only did the formula in the cup transform Bruno, transform his clothes as well. Yeah. He had a reverse yeah. Hulk situation. Clothes still fit. Like the pants yeah, still yeah. fit. Yeah. 
And then fifth hand, the shoes. The shoe oh, shrunk right. too. That's an his amazing. Socks. Alec Holland really has revolutionized the world with this. Absolutely. Bruno turned into like a midget, didn't he? Yeah, with weird ears. Yeah. Oh, like a hobbit. Hmm. Care me. <laughs> me. So, yeah. Uh, Tough to watch. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is this is sadly going to be a short episode because uh, I don't know what there is to say about this. <laughs> what, what do you think about Swamp Thing? Um, thinking like when it was made, that costume probably would have been the costume was the most expensive thing. It would have been like top end, like the technology and makeup yeah. was just amazing. Nowadays, it's just like yeah, complete oh, crap. Yeah, that's just like CGI, bro. So I've tried to keep that in mind. Green suit, bro. How come half, like how come the third act doesn't end with him blowing up half the swamp? He should have just totally like destroyed every building in that swamp. Why but didn't the that... swamp control some vines and like eat boats and stuff? Yeah, I, I don't think it's actually right picking on his um, costume because that other dude's costume. The oh. oh yeah, I was going to say that, that wolf, wolf. That was bad. Thing. That was just like one of those you know Halloween costumes you just buy it like the costume yeah, that or was, whatever. Like a horse head. Are you ready? Are you ready for? Okay, I'm gonna break down. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of excitement. Call this the teaser trailer, if you will. Arcane is alive and the villain in the sequel, and the ex the excuse they give as to how he is alive. Amazing. <laughs> so it's, li it's literally. Fuck. It's literally just like you're alive. Yeah. yeah, but I have these weird spots on my hand that I sometimes subconsciously look at and scratch. <laughs> uh, Do they focus on it for like three seconds? It's a different director, but uh, yes, they do. <laughs> so they're important. Was this Wes Craven's first film? It's up there. I don't think it's his very no. first, but it's it's before Nightmare. This this is the film he did, and then after this, they were like, "You can make Nightmare on Elm Street," and he was like, "Thanks." I wonder yeah. if it was supposed to be bad on purpose. It was, it was like, like it, yeah, we'll do your Nightmare on Elm Street, but you're going to have to do one of ours. Yeah, the so Edward Norton like, contract, yeah, yeah. I'm going to make this one shit. He goes, yo, you go do Nightmare. And made him amazing. Probably. Are you asking if it's meant to be like the Godzilla, King Kong? Yeah. I think so. I think he was trying to pay homage to that. Because what it feels like to me is Wes Craven was trying to make... Like, Wes Craven makes slasher films, not horror films. Yeah. But he was trying to make a horror film, so to him is a horror film where I grew up is a traditional monster movie. So he just made like I think what happened is I can't remember which company financed making this film, but they've gone to him and gone, we wanted to make Swamp Thing, and he was like, well, "What is it?" They were like, "I oh, like a monster movie with guys in suits." So he went, "All right, I'll just make a monster movie with guys in suits," because it is. It's just King Kong or Godzilla yeah. or something. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, it just went around and around uh, in circles. Uh, and, oh, okay. We got to remit, you know, back in the eighties, <clears throat> that was a big that was a big hit because <clears throat> that's what kids wanted to see. Oh, yeah, it would have been yeah. somewhat scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mean nightmares. Back then, I mean, mm. I, like I say, I'm the first one. I I reckon I watched <laughs> the first one as a kid, maybe once or twice. Mm. But I know I, I, the second one is. Well, the Dark Crystal used to scare the fuck out of oh, me yeah. when I was yeah. little. Oh, look, you watch that now, you're like. Man, Papa's never scared me. Well, never in a story scared me. The dragon. You know, that scared the Falcor? Yeah, Falcor. Get He's not my bro! <laughs> so I don't! I want to ride Falcor! He's a wicked! Oh, I had dreams. I had scary dreams about him. He was coming, coming at me. I had dreams. <laughs> it, is it because he's white? No, he's hairy. <laughs> And white. I, I'm calling racism. No, he doesn't have a problem with white with white things. He's just going to have a problem with hairy white things. That's why he's fine with you. But you're white. You're whiter than I am. Yeah, but I'm hairy. That's why he doesn't like me. <laughs> Got him! <laughs> Come on! See, I watched oh. uh, Candyman at, te at 10. <laughs> You know, Tony Todd was the fucking scariest bloke ever. Candyman, that actually is was a pretty decent movie. I remember mm. watching that. Well. I um, I remember watching that. Um, we we uh, had a couple of guys, or group Whoa. of us, from, <laughs> group of us from school, girls as well. We all watched Candyman at night and we turned the lights off. And then, like, we got up at the uh, after we'd, the movie finished, turned the lights on, and we noticed that we put all our candy inside the box, the the DVD cover, and we're like. Dude, that's fucking creepy as fuck. 
All right. Well, anybody, any, anybody got any last thoughts on this one before we put a pin in it? Put a pin in it. <laughs> I would have to say, I, I still can't understand why one car, five or six boats, and every time, you know, she falls over, she looks at the car and it's, you know, 20 k's away, but we're supposed to make, you know, we're supposed to believe that it's only two meters away. I like how the distance never changes. Yeah, well. it never changes. It's always <laughs> down the road. It's like you just sit there, you know, just waiting for them to go, you know, do we go, do we go, do we, you know, what do we do? Can I plant it yet? Can I plant yeah. it yet? Like, can dude, I'm bitch? still, <laughs> can I get out of, like, 5K it's now? clear the OH and S gone wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a valid I, I love how, I love how fake it looked when she got stabbed in the boob. And uh, <laughs> the knife looked like it didn't even go in at all. The sword didn't look like it didn't go in. It was pouring out. Uh, the blood was pouring out. And this swamp thing just grabs her tit. And That's what swamp thing does, man. It, the, the entire field was built around Swamp Thing wanting to grab her tit. From when he, when, when, from when he's Alec Holland and he meets her, he's like, I'm going to grab them big ass titties. And he gets to the end of the film, he's like, yeah. yeah, medical reason. Just like Batman making out with Vicky Vale or Harley Quinn. And he's like, I'm going to do it, mm -hmm. but it'll be under mouth to mouth. Because then I'm safe. So is that yeah. why there was so much boobies in like the international cut? Was that supposed to be? No, that's how many boobies there's meant to be. It's just that yeah, the, the difference the, the, the is in the 80s. Of, yeah, I like, want to touch them. The difference but... is that over there... Uh, they wanted over there. They wanted kids to go and see it because it gave you a PG thirteen thing. In the rest of the world market, there is no PG thirteen. There's just a mature rating. So it instantly in the rest of the world, it got a mature rating. So we're like, leave the tits in. For the American one, you get PG thirteen was that if you put the boobs in, you get an R rating, which puts it up to seventeen or above. So they were like, no, no, we want kids to be able to go see this. I was just talking more about for Swamp Things sake. To try and tell the story more that you know you see her boobies was, and he's obviously the swamp and I, he's going to be watching. I think it's her. Okay. Well, he 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 was watching her in the in the original in the cut where she's bathing. He he stands there watching her and then he smiles and walks away. But I think it's more of a case of what it's meant to be is that that's the human, the side. human side of him still is still alive because he's still attracted to a woman. So the man isn't dead yet, even though he's totally made up of the swamp. All that's left of the man is the essence. Yeah. Swamp Thing is a magic being, thing. basically. Yeah. Swamp Thing is a magic being, basically. Because he, he all that is alive of him is his soul. His body is completely gone. But because of that chemical that he got splashed on himself before he got set on fire, he regrew his own body from the swamp. Mm. It's quite deep and complex. I mean it's an Alan Moore comic, for fuck's sake. And the dude wrote Watchmen. You don't you don't write something like Watchmen without taking a lot of acid. You don't write Swamp Thing without taking something beforehand. <laughs> dude, dude was cleaning like pond scum off his either out the back or like going through his pool and taking the algae off and was just like, man, these mushrooms are kicking in. This pool is coming to life and talking to me. What if it was like a pool man? Wait, that doesn't make any sense. Swamp, dude. Yeah, you're onto something, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. my theory. All right, let's do it then. Let's hand out some awards. Go on up first. Who's getting your Googs? The Guggenheim Award for Shittery is going to... The wetsuit. Yeah? The wetsuit. Yeah. The, giving... the rest of it I can handle. Oh, actually, the both suits. The, the, the villain and something things with that suit. <laughs> okay. The villain, uh, suit. Yeah. So who are you giving yours to, bro? Uh, I'm, I'm going to give it to the um, curly head headband. Rapist band. Rambo. Yeah, I'm giving mine to Rapist Rambo too. I'm going to give mine to the whole group. Because they were just so dumb. They were all very just dumb. But just the way, the way and... he died was really shit. Well, getting his head crushed and then pulled into the swamp. Oh, well, I only saw him get his hair pulled. It looked to me like he pulled his hair and he died. I uh, know, swamp thing was meant to crush his head. Cracked okay, his head with his hand. Yeah. It was to show how strong he is because he's Swamp Thing. And you don't okay. fuck with Swamp Thing's like You don't try and drown Swamp Thing's lady. No. You just don't, don't do it. it. You're going to have a bad time. Wayne, who are you giving your Guggenheim Award to? I had to say the 80s. 
<laughs> the entire <laughs> 80s. 80s. Fucking hell. Wow. Wayne's just taking a taking Twitter by a storm. Thanks, fuck yeah. fuck you, 80s. 80s. Ghostbusters, 16 Candles, Breakfast Club. Fuck you! Well, 80s horror because. Oh, Jesus, now he's attacking. Friday the 13th. No, because Halloween. No, no, they're slashes. They're not horrors. They're slashes. They're still because... classes horror. Oh, no, no. He's, no, 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 he's no, got no, you in a barrel. No. He does a slash film in separate to a horror film. Yeah. Back in the 80s, they were different. Um, he's got you there. All right. He's got you there. God damn it. You know, hindsight is a bloody wonderful thing. You know, you only get it after you, after the fact that it happened. Yeah. And, um, yeah, if, if you got it beforehand, it would be foresight. <laughs> yeah. And, yay. No! <laughs> I think that's actually right, but. Yeah, so the whole 80s. The whole 80s, yeah. The whole 80s, well, yeah. Right. Fuck you. I'm from the 80s, you bastard. What are oh, we? I. Me too. Who no, are you? I'm actually older. No, you're from like 1880s. <laughs> well, I tell everyone that I'm uh, I'm as old as a calendar, so you know. <clears throat> yeah, so you're <laughs> literally so from old. the well, 80s. You're, you're like no... an older kid in the 80s. Yeah. No, he so... he was the 80s. Like, no, there was no hundreds and thousands. He was <laughs> just the 80s. <laughs> yeah. it's like the year before was 79. They didn't have hundreds and thousands in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's mm -hmm. hand out. Just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Don't go to my. <laughs> um, who are you giving your Cranston to? Mine's going to the hairdresser that could keep a perm <laughs> in wet weather, in wet environments. That's the eighties. Because that is magic. Yeah. You got some skills. You can make a perm. perm. All perms, because there was two of them. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Rambo, Rambo rapist kept his perm as well. Yeah. yeah, so... Maybe that's just the humidity of the Louisiana swamps. But that doesn't explain the straight hair. Yeah, because some people can't get... Like, Asians don't get frizzy hair. You'll never see an Asian with an afro. That was you know what? I want to call it out right now. If we see, treated. If we see an... I want to see an Asian with an afro that... I'm giving my Cranston to Dick Duroc, the Swamp Thing. Even yeah. though they overdubbed your voice in this one, you cut back in the second one, like it deserves to be. But he's getting my Cranston based solely on how good he is in the second one. That's how good he is in the second one. He gets the Cranston for this one as well. Wow. Brayden, who are you giving the Cranston to? Uh, I'm going to give it to Cable. I felt she just kicked ass in general. She... Didn't really like to take shit from anyone. Um, you know, she did a couple of stupid moves, but she she kicked that. It's a horror. I just I just remember something amazing from that film. That gun that exploded in her hand. Oh yeah, that was amazing. Brilliant. Wayne, you got a Creston? Yeah, the uh, the bloke, the stuntman who was on fire. Yeah, that was you know quite epic. Back then, it would have been one of the first the times. I remember yeah. that was one of the first times I saw a dude on fire in a film. Yeah, yeah, it would be. It's pretty impressive. Mm. The only other one I remember was in uh, FX, The Art of Illusion. They set a dude on fire. Yes. That was a really good movie. Remember that movie? I choose not to. Really? <laughs> no, I didn't. If no, you no, haven't, no, if have, you have, have not, not seen FX, life, The yeah. Art of Illusion with Brian Brown and uh, Brian Dennehy, you do yourself a favour mm. and you watch that. Because that movie is fucking great. You hear me? The movie is fucking Great. Was it made anyway, in the 80s? It was made in the 80s. And do you know what else? It was fucking great. Who's your uh, Chris and going to? I'm going to give mine the Swamp Thing. He worked. <clears throat> He's pretty good. He's a good character. Yeah. Like his it's costume great. was crap, but it's better like than the second kind one. Of, out of all the characters, he was the best one. I don't know if I've mentioned this or not, but his costume does get better in the second one. Yeah. You've mentioned that numerous times More now. Area. All right, so let's talk about thumbs up or thumbs down. Where are we going with this one? I'm going to have to go two down. Matt's opinion is invalid, Brayden. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I was pretty intrigued at the start about the character and, and where he come from and, and things like that. Uh... And then from there, it sort of went downhill. So I'm going to go one down. Wayne, what do you got? Um, I'm going to say one down. 
You know, if it was the eighties, I would say I would say three thumbs up. He said the eighties, Drake. Now, the, so if this was made in the seventies or the nineties, you'd be no, like fucking rich. Oh, if it was made in the nineties. <laughs> If it was made in the 90s, it'll be, it you know, be an action. It movie. would be spawned if it was made in the 90s. Yeah. But, you know, you know, when you watch it. Hang on, 80s... I'm, calling you, I'm calling you to task right now in your 80s thing with, with one film Robocop. <gasps> Is that a horror, though? No, he, he took the 80s to task. No, I said, I said, the, I said the, uh, the horrors. He corrected himself. Uh, okay, yeah. I did do the horrors because Robocop, you can't beat that. Yeah, see? Even the new one can't beat it. How many thumbs up? You, I, go watch your Ghostbusters sequel somewhere else. How many thumbs up and thumbs down <laughs> oh, are you giving? No. I'm going to give it one up because I tried to keep in mind it's made in the early 80s and so it is going to be bad by our standards today, but back then yeah, it she'll was gets reasonable. three thumbs up. Don't worry, stop talking. Three thumbs up. This is my show. That's all that matters. <laughs> three thumbs up. Uh, it's a great movie. Go there and watch it. No, but seriously, are we giving it a watch or a not watch? I'm giving it a watch. Watch it. It's Give it a watch. I would watch. Yeah. Give it a watch. Yeah, I'd, I'd say watch it. I mean, I'm I'm hesitant about the second one, even though you said that it's so much better. It's I just better. can't see what the hell they're going to do. Oh, the oh, oh, Brayden. Uh, the costume oh, does Brayden. look better. I do want to see oh, the second Brayden. one. Brayden. I will admit. Brayden. Oh, Brayden. Brayden. Are you mad? Yeah, we just need No. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, I'm not you. Has your, has your editing coming along? Yes. It's done. It's just finalising now. All right. Well, I think that brings us to the end of the show. Has anybody got anything else they would like to say before we uh, before we come back? I, I want to make a couple of announcements myself. But first of all, we have a new sponsor here from the Batcave. It is the Bam Box. Uh, to see the first Bam Box on Bloxing, you can go... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Fuck it out. To see the first Bam Box on Bloxing, you can go to the web address that's on the screen right now. Uh, otherwise, there will be information coming in the in the next few weeks about how exactly you can go about purchasing your Bam Box so we get a bit of a kickback through it. Don't worry. Won't cost you anything extra to do that. Uh, nice. Secondly, we have some new web series coming out soon. Uh, we hope you'll enjoy those. More, more on those in the coming weeks as well. So keep your eyes tuned for those and your eyes for eyes tuned. Fuck it. Tune your eyes. If you haven't tuned them already, go see an optometrist and get him to tune them in for you. Uh, and finally... <laughs> You're just rambling now. Finally, uh, I did have a third point. What was it? Oh, yes, finally. We'll be back uh, with another one of these on Swamp Things soon and a special one looking at the Suicide Squad as well, uh, the theatrical release. Well, obviously, we'll be doing um, a film release of that as well. We'll also be looking at Batman vs. Superman. That'll, that'll, these small episodes will be coming in the interim to tide you over until we return in October with our normal season as per normal when TV comes back. So, yeah, uh, anybody got anything else they'd like to say? Yeah. Still rendering? No, it's finished. It's ready to go. All right, well... I'll tell you what, mate. You've been building up to this all night, so give it a sec. I'll do it on the right way for you. This has been From the Back Cave. I've been your host, Red Thunder, Adam Gerard. And joining me this week have been the Dad Night Braid in the Hearn. Hey, guys. HD. <laughs> LL Cool Elder himself, Wayne Campbell. Yes, I am black. <laughs> he is still black. The Prez, Adriana Allman. I'm white. Also true. <laughs> Wait, you're not Mexican? <laughs> And finally, Matt the Pro Britson. To Matt, you've been gearing up to this all night. So what do you got? You got something to show us? Yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, let's sit back and let's enjoy Proby's masterpiece. What's it called? This is... This has been a Cabana production.